Okay, we're going to define what the gravitational field is, and it's pretty easy, but it's a different way of looking at what gravity is. Um, if you're near the Earth's surface, okay, and uh, you have some mass, you're, you're a particle of some kind, okay, like a baseball or something. Uh, the Earth's mass is pulling on your mass with this uh, force of gravity. And if this is the only force acting, then this is the net force and it's equal to ma. And this is the acceleration due to Earth's gravitational pull. Um, so, but, so let's um, uh, solve this for the acceleration, okay, the acceleration of gravity, so we can call it G instead of A, and we're going to say, well, that's the force of gravity <coughs> divided by the mass of the object. Now, this force of gravity is a vector, so it's got direction. And so this acceleration of gravity has direction, the same direction. And uh, so far this year, we've thought of this as being in terms of the acceleration that you would get if you released that object and it fell down. But another way of looking at this is how much pull do we get per kilogram of mass of our object? In other words, just look at, instead of canceling out the kilograms, like this is Newtons and this is uh, uh, kilograms here, right? And, and, and uh, a, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if you divide it by the mass, you're dividing out the kilograms, and so you get meters per second squared. But why not just think of it as being Newtons per kilogram, as being the units for this? And this makes a lot of sense. For example, if um, you have a crate that's at rest on the ground, that's not accelerating at all. It's not in free fall. You've got a normal force up as well uh, that's supporting the weight. Um, and yet, we do have a G here, don't we? This um, has a force of gr uh, gravity and I can take that and divide it by the mass and I would still get the, you know, this is kind of a measure of how strong gravity is pulling on this. It's how many newtons of force you get per kilogram of mass. And if you think of G like that, you're no longer thinking of it in terms of acceleration, you know, from being in free fall, you're thinking of it in terms of what we call the gravitational field. Now, what uh, th this is the, your first force field that we're going to talk about. We they talk about force fields in science fiction all the time, but it's all a bunch of, of silliness. Um, there are three main force fields we're going to deal with in this class. There's only one of them in mechanics, which is the gravitational force field. Uh, next semester, we're going to study the electric force field and the magnetic force field. Okay, so we do deal with force fields. Um, now, uh, if I take a planet, that is a darn good circle if I do say so. Look at that. Free, free hand. Woo! I'm getting better at circles. All right, now, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now, if if I put a little test mass right here, and I want to test what the gravitational field is at that point. Well, gravity is always attractive, so it's going to pull like this, right? We're going to get a strength of gravity. Now, it's not going to be the same G. You get you, you get the same thing. You, I mean, G, Now our, we're now going to call it the gravitational field, is, is the force of gravity divided by the mass, this is the big mass, this is the mass of my 
of the object that I'm going to test the field with. I'm going to use this, maybe make it a one kilogram mass, that's nice, and measure how much force is on it, and I'm going to move it around. Now, but, but the thing is, is that <coughs> now the force of gravity, we can use Newton's law of gravity here, where we have G, M, M over R squared, divided by my test mass, M. And this is all in the negative R hat direction, right? The, the negative R hat means towards the center of this big planet. And the mass of my test mass will always cancel out. And so we can say that the gravitational field, the equation for the gravitational field, which we did derive in terms of acceleration the other day, is gm over r squared. Now, this will reduce to units of meters per second squared, but you can also think of it as being newtons per kilogram. This has units of newtons per kilogram. Okay. Now, I also want you to be, we can also draw uh, what we call gravitational field lines. And field lines are a way of visualizing any kind of force field. And we, we don't use them that much for gravity. We use them a lot for electric fields and magnetic fields. We draw field lines. But you can do this uh, for gravity as well. If I put my test mass here, it's pulled down like this. But what if I put it right over here? It's pulled down like this. Over here, it's pulled down like this. And if I just connect these, I get, I get, I can uh, draw one big field line. Now, a field line just kind of represents what the field, uh, the effect that the field is having on any test mass along this line. It gives me an idea of the direction of the force. And of course, it's towards the center of the planet. So I can draw lots of field lines, you know, around here like this. And of course, these extend in three-dimensional space, but I can only draw it on two dimensions. And uh, one of the things I'd like you to see is that what happens to these field lines as I get farther and farther away from the planet? They get farther apart. And what that means is that the gravitational field is weaker. So if you're drawing field lines, gravitational field lines, and the field lines are really far apart, that means the gravitational field is weak. But if they're very close together, that means the field lines are very, very strong. Okay. Now, if you're back up here on your on your uh, the, this flat plane right here, close to the Earth's surface, we would draw the field lines as being parallel. These are the field lines, the gravitational field lines. And what we're saying here is that, look, when you're close to the Earth's surface, you can consider the gravitational field to be a constant. And that gravitational field is just 9.8 newtons per kilogram in a downward direction. But are these actually parallel? No. They, you know, if, if you measured the gravitational field on the floor, and then you measure the gravitational field a couple of meters up off the floor, it's also slightly weaker. You're a little bit farther from the center of the Earth, and therefore the gravity is a little tiny bit weaker, but it's not measurably different by any in any practical way. You're not going to notice it. Um, you, you, you need to go 100 or 200 miles up before you really start noticing that the gravitational field is getting weaker. Okay, and so that's it for gravitational fields.